It's space weather. Looking at that 171 angstrom sun. What do we have? Bow. Sunspot 2728. It's new and improved. It's not super powerful, but let's look at it anyway. Check it out in 304 angstroms. Springing into existence. Hey, look at the magnetic lines. Corona hole looks like it should be connected. We'll check the phi angle in a moment. Let's take a close up of that sunspot. And there you have it. Looks a little bit like a sea turtle. All right. And let's look at spaceweathernews.com to see what's going on with the data. And when I woke up this morning, I saw some B-class flares, the biggest solar flares we've had in weeks. In fact, those flares are bigger than any produced by Sunspot 2727. We can see no, sh no phi angle signal here, indicating probably no magnetic connection with coronal holes, or perhaps the magnetic fields of the Sunspot are canceling them out. Now. Solar wind has dropped way down in density. Looks like about five protons per cubic centimeter and about 350 kilometers per second solar wind speed. Magnetometer's got some steep spikes in it. No surprise there, probably caused by the X-ray flux. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And the KP index has come up off the floor, still at one. So low cosmic ray flux risk. <clears throat> I'll take this moment to predict an uptick in the X ray and in the electron flux. It should go above ten to the fourth. We'll see what happens. Eyes on that coronal hole. There's your F two ionosphere layer looking quite normal. And there's your weak auroral forecasts. What's the situation with the earthquakes? All right, let's go back 15 hours. 4.6 in Argentina. 4.4 in China. Another very far south quake near the near the uh, Antarctica once again. 4.9. 4.6 in Peru. 4.2 in Afghanistan at depth, so they should be on alert for a high level 4 or a low level 5. Philippines should stay on alert for a 5. Little little shaker in Virgin Islands. And that's about it for that. Now, if you get up before sunrise, as we do practically every day, and you have a clear sky. Go out and look to the east if you're in the northern hemisphere. Look to the southeast. You will see an amazing Venus. And it's so bright right now that you'll actually be able to see it after it gets light out. Now... Let's look at spaceweather.com so we can talk about sunspots for a quick minute here. Here's the intensity gram of the sunspot, by the way. You can see it does have umbra.
Okay. Don't make a liar out of me, space weather. That appears to be it there, but that doesn't look quite right. Anyway, how is the sunspot number calculated? Well, it's a little on the silly side, but we'll leave a link to it here. Basically, not as straightforward as it sounds. Suppose you looked at the sun through low-power binoculars. Anyway, the power of the device that you're viewing the sunspots with is part of the calculation. R is a sunspot number. G is the number of groups on the disk. S is the total number of individual spots in all the groups. And K is the variable scaling factor, usually less than one, that accounts for observing conditions in the type of telescope, binoculars, space telescope, etc. And this is part of the reason why when we see one tiny sunspot, we end up with a sunspot number of 11. It's because of this calculation. I'm not saying it's wrong or right. I'm just saying how it's calculated. And there are two different numbers. One is the Boulder, the, uh, the International Sunspot Number, published by the Solar Influences Data Center in Belgium. And then you have the Boulder Number, which is the one that's reported on spaceweather.com. Just thought I'd share. So that's how sunspot numbers are calculated. Two different agencies are doing the calculations. Now, let's look at some Earth weather for once. Checking out the AccuWeather.com Doppler radar, we can see the East Coast is about to be inundated. We've got a wintry mix in Virginia, North Carolina, Ohio coated with heavy rains. So if you're in the Northeast, by the end of your day on Saturday, Expect heavy downpours. The forecast is for inches of rain in all of these areas. Also, in the northwest, we're getting some steady snow out there. If you're wondering how to read weather maps, well, the Doppler doesn't always do it. So, you're going to want to look at a water vapor map for those areas where you're wondering what's going to happen, right? So here's AccuWeathers. We're going to look at a better, higher resolution one in a minute. But you can see what's driving these storms and these storms, okay? On the East Coast, what's happening is, well, let's, let's, look, at our, let's look at a better map first. So this gives you some idea. Without having to go to a different website, you can go right to AccuWeather Doppler, right to AccuWeather Water Vapor, and get both, but let's go a step farther here, or a step further. Let's further our stepping, stepping into further quagmires. Stepping farther into the furthering of our stepping into quagmires. So here's the NASA GOES water vapor map. Gives you a little bit more uh, resolution here and what's happening is you've got a jet stream coming down way down like this and coming back up you've got this dry massive air piling up here it's got nowhere to go and as a result you're getting low pressure behind it and we've got a weak surface low around Long Island, which is pulling this moisture. I don't know why it keeps doing that, which is pulling this moisture out to sea. While the jet stream is pushing it this way, you're getting a splitting effect there. Let's take a look at the uh, NASA long wave radiation. Channel 14. And now let's look at the short wave so you can see the interaction between the weak surface low and the 
more powerful upper level low, which is causing that precipitation. Now, if you look at this, see these surface clouds in here? They're actually being pulled this way by this weak low, which is right around here. And then you have this upper level low. And we've got a little bit of atmospheric compression right in this area. Let's go back to the water vapor map and zoom in on that area as there should be some violent activities occurring there. Let's let this load. And there's an excellent view of the dry, massive air and its interaction with this moist air. See a whole bunch of streamers forming. You can see like a shockwave compression line right here. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the videos if you haven't done so already. We'll be looking at sunspots and solar flares and CMEs and everything else sun-related every day. And then we're going to throw in some other random science stuff just to show them. finish out with a zoom in a sunspot 2728 it will be named by the end of the day naming contest let's name it 2728 what do you think not very imaginative hey remember when you're naming sunspots don't drink and if you drink don't drive